Most prisons around the world have some pretty terrible living conditions. Cramped spaces, terrible food, and gripping the soap so tight you wish you never committed a crime in the first place. That is certainly the case for most prisons around the world, but there is one which we're going to talk about today which is quite different to this. A prison that some might consider, in comparison, to be the most luxurious prison in the world. And, uh, well, if I was going to commit any crimes anywhere, it would be Norway. This is Brain Spill, my name is Tank, and today we're talking about the world's most luxurious prison. But, more specifically, why this prison exists, what's in the prison to make it so luxurious, and the question that I think we're all asking is, is it worth committing a crime to go to that prison so you don't have to pay for rent or a mortgage? Um, I will answer that too because I was genuinely curious when I first looked up this topic. The answer may shock you. In the realm of correctional facilities worldwide, one establishment stands out as the embodiment of progressive penal philosophy, the Holden Prison in Norway. Often hailed as the world's most luxurious prison, Holden challenges conventional notions of incarceration by prioritising rehabilitation, human rights and offender reintegration into society. The prison itself is classified as a maximum security prison, which is basically a prison for the worst kinds of people in the country. Established in 2010, this is Norway's third biggest prison, but also with a distinct lack of conventional security devices, such as barbed wire fences, surveillance or security towers. This place seems anything but high security. There is a steel wall and some safety glass, but that is pretty much the extent of the security we're looking at here, not including the security guards that are also on duty, mind you. Although there are surveillance cameras on the prison grounds, they're pretty much not present in or around the cells. The cell hallways, the common rooms, the classrooms, and most of the workshops. There is a whole host of unique features and principles that makes Holden Prison an exceptional institution and a shining example of how a humane approach to incarceration might yield better results than simply throwing all your prisoners in a hole and seeing what happens. The whole point of this, and something which, when you think about it, actually makes a lot of sense, is that they try and make Holden Prison more like real life. Doing day-to-day -day things to try and reintegrate these people back into an actual society. And once they're released, it's not so much of a shock that they simply go back to the ways of prison life. There is a key difference here, however. Not treating the prisoner like cattle and leaving them to rot, but to try and make the people better than they once were to get them to be released and actually contribute to society. And it does make you wonder, does it actually work? Holden Prison is guided by the principle that incarceration should serve as a means of rehabilitation rather than punishment. Norway's criminal justice system places a strong emphasis on reintegrating offenders into society as productive citizens. This philosophy is rooted in the belief that people can change, and even people that have committed serious crimes should be given a second chance. That, I imagine, is going to be quite controversial, and it certainly is, because yes, someone that's committed a white-collar crime, you could probably give them a slap on the wrist and a little bit of a punishment and maybe they won't do it again. But for serious crimes against, well, us as a society, I'm talking about the M word, the R word, the H word, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But basically, horrific crimes are the people that are in this prison. So I think a lot of this is where you draw the line and at what point do you think that somebody's crime should be given a second chance or whether it's completely unforgivable. That I'm going to let you decide in the comments because I ain't touching those comments and <laughs> just get the engagement up. At Holden Prison the first striking element is the prison's architectural design. Located in a picturesque woodland area the facility resembles a modern college campus rather than a traditional prison. Inmates are housed in small but comfortable cells with ample natural light, private bathrooms, mini fridges, desks and even flat screen televisions. This is a stark departure from the typical overcrowded prison environment that you might have seen everywhere else before. So, like I said, it aims to provide a sense of dignity to these inmates. And you know what, looking at those pictures, it doesn't look bad. I've stayed in hotels worse than that, and that's saying something. 
hotels that I've paid for. But these, they seem quite good. And you know what, if I was in prison, I don't think I could ask for anything better. Having such basic amenities, such as natural light, space, and even the benefit of a little privacy, I imagine does wonders to one's mental health. This emphasis on privacy extends to the showers and communal areas in the prison also, where inmates are encouraged to maintain their living spaces with personal touches, fostering a sense of responsibility and ownership. This environment is conductive to psychological well-being, reducing stress and aggression often associated with traditional prisons. This, again, in my mind, makes complete sense. If you go back to a tip at night, you're gonna basically just feel and do nothing productive. However, if you go back to your own space and you've kept it nice and clean and well-kempt, then I think that you'll be in a space where you can really appreciate it and maybe actually be productive rather than just shiv your neighbor next door. As well as providing some responsibilities for these crooks and criminals, Holden Prison believes in keeping inmates engaged and active. They are offered a variety of educational and vocational opportunities whilst in prison, including woodworking, cooking, gardening, and other things like that. Inmates also have access to well-stocked libraries, music rooms, and have access to art supplies as well. They also have access to jogging trials, a football field, a gym, and even a mixing studio if they decide that they want to get behind the decks whilst behind bars. My question is, do they have access to the internet, filming equipment, and a computer to edit with? Because if so, I know exactly what I'm doing if I was ever in prison. Basically, this. <laughs> you can tell that I have absolutely no life whatsoever. The emphasis on education and skill building is a critical component to this whole rehabilitation process, giving inmates the tools they need to reintegrate into society upon release. This idea also extends to trying to simulate key parts of being a productive member of society. Getting a bloody job when everything is all said and done. So, whilst also having hobbies, they also have the opportunity to do some paid work, such as working in the kitchens or workshops and creating goods that are sold outside of the prison. This not only gives them a sense of responsibility, keeps them out of trouble, but a unique part of the Norwegian justice system is that the actual compensation the prisoners receive for doing this work, a small proportion of that is taken aside and given to victims for basically, in a very small way, trying to make amends. And the great thing about all of this, the salaries are actually competitive, rather than just getting paid peanuts like you probably do in most other prisons. The prison staff at Holden undergo extensive training and interpersonal skills, de-escalation techniques and conflict resolution. Their approach is grounded in respect, treating inmates as individuals with the potential to reform rather than just treating them as mere criminals. This approach fosters trust between the staff and the inmates, contributing to a safer and more harmonious environment. Ha, <laughs> who'd have thought right? Trust between prisoners and prison guards. I don't think I've ever seen that ever before. In real life or in media, it's, um, it's quite a unique thing. This means that the settling of any beef between prisoners, which surprisingly doesn't happen that much in a prison with such a low crime rate, is possible and can be resolved through things like mediation. Which is very different from being shivved by the prisoner in the shower, like most prisons around the world, giving this a rather breath of fresh air compared to what we've seen before. Prisoners are even allowed visits from friends and family twice a week on a private basis, which also includes the occasional conjugal visit if you get my drift. The perks of being in prison here simply can't be understated. Holden Prison's focus on this rehabilitation extends to post-release planning. Inmates are provided with support to help them transition back into a society, and not only that, but to be successful at it as well. This includes assistance with finding employment, housing and access to mental health services if needed. The goal is to reduce the likelihood of reoffending and to enable former inmates to lead productive lives. So, after all of this, I know the question you're asking. As great as it sounds, does it work? One of the most remarkable aspects of Holden Prison and its low recidivism rate otherwise known as the rate of criminals committing crimes in the future, 
Norway has the honour of boasting the fact that it has one of the lowest rates of repeating offenders in the world. And Holden Prison plays a significant role in that achievement. Like I said, this whole emphasis of reintegration and rehabilitation is seemingly doing wonders. And for anyone that might have gone down the wrong path in life, at least there's a glimmer of hope that if they put the work in, they can come out on the other side a better person than they were when they went in. The public on the whole don't view the prison as a bad thing and seem to share the idea that people should be given a chance to turn their lives around and also be allowed to live in somewhat humane conditions, so hopefully this prison goes quite some way to achieve that. Whilst this is just simply one side of the coin, there are of course always people that are going to disagree with this, and claim that the prison shouldn't be treating people like this, particularly people that have gone down for serious crimes. So, after all of that, the question remains, if you were to commit a crime, is it worth it if you know you're going in this prison? Well, let me first say that uh, you should never commit a crime. Don't take drugs, kids. Do your homework. All that jazz. Whilst this all sounds great, the fact that you're still in prison, it's probably not worth it. I think I would rather do the nine to five and live in my own home rather than living in a prison. I mean, as nice as a prison as it is, it's still a prison. So, if that's the case, and then the question lied on the fact that you had to decide which prison you go to, then you know for a fact that this is going to be number one. I mean, after everything I've told you, why wouldn't it be? This innovative approach to prison life is a testament to the belief that those who have committed serious crimes can be rehabilitated and reintegrated into society. Holden Prison is a shining example of this potential for humane and effective prison systems worldwide, especially whilst you compare it to some other prisons around the world. Looking at you, America. If you guys liked that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.